Now at 6 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, an infant in Houston dies after he was left inside a hot vehicle. Police still searching for Jalen Dequan Davis wanted out of Wharton County. And Governor Greg Abbott signs a huge property tax cut bill. We have those details straight ahead. Another day with triple digits. Yes, we got up to 100 uh, and we're looking for very little relief. Get a lot of this Gonzalez 107 that was today. We'll talk more about the hot weather coming up. And volleyball teams took to the hardwood last night. We see how some did in sports. You're watching 25 News now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker. And I'm Karina Garcia. Warren police report Jalen Daquan Davis is wanted for evading, unlawful possession, deadly conduct, discharge of a firearm, and possession of marijuana. A fifth charge added for unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. Should you know his whereabouts, contact the Warren Police Department at 979-532-3131. Houston police report a three-month-old boy is dead. Reports say he was left inside a hot vehicle in the southeast Houston area. As the sun sets on another scorching triple digit day, a family is grieving the loss of a three month old baby boy left inside a car in the parking lot of the Harris Center for Mental Health and Intellectual Developmental Disability. Here's the thing, um, you know, from time to time we have incidents like this, which should never happen, um, especially during summertime. You should never leave a child unattended. Police are still trying to nail down a timeline of how long the baby was left alone in the car. They say they're still trying to figure out if the car was left running or if this was possibly intentional. Investigators confirm the woman got out of the car with her four year old child and the three month old was left behind. As a woman was leaving the clinic, police say she noticed her unresponsive son inside the car and took him in the clinic. The baby was taken to an area hospital where he ultimately died. I'm not sure what charges could be, but it, it depends on the, uh, the autopsy report and the, what the investigation reveals. According to state law, it is a misdemeanor to leave a child younger than seven alone in a car for more than five minutes. As little shoes sit in the dash of his mother's car, a tragic ending for a boy whose life was just beginning. In Houston, Daniela Hurtado, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Back in our area, the National Weather Service issues excessive heat warnings for two area counties. DeWitt and Lavaca counties under excessive heat warnings until 9 o'clock tonight. The National Weather Service says temperatures up to 108 degrees are expected. And with that, let's take a look at our forecast with first Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Mac Perez. Mac, what, 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 what can you tell us now? You know? I, I really don't have any good news. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be like this for about four more weeks before we finally get less sunshine uh, in the daytime to cool us down. Not a cloud in the sky, so it was warm. And the interesting thing that the heat and the humidity today made it feel like 116. So that's not the temperature. That was the heat index this afternoon. We'll be talking about that. And of course, the other problem is a high fire danger. We'll talk about that coming up in a moment. Back to you. Mac, thank you. And four Texas congressmen send a letter urging the U.S. Postal Service to better safeguard postal carriers. KIII reports the congressmen are calling on them to make a plan that allows letter carriers to take breaks from the hot weather, have access to cold water without having to buy it themselves, and avoid penalties in the event they have to visit a store or return to U.S. Postal Service station to pick up water. A 66-year-old letter carrier in Dallas died during his route on a day when the heat index topped 110 degrees. Governor Greg Abbott Wednesday held a signing of a historic property tax cut legislation that was passed by lawmakers last month. Abbott officially signed the $18 billion package in July. The Texas Tribune reports the package puts $12.6 billion of the state's historic budget surplus toward making cuts to school taxes for all property owners and it drops property taxes an average of more than 40% for some 5.7 million Texas homeowners. Well, the, the details of what you're voting for is simply the largest tax cut in the world. And that's $18 billion that turns into th over $1,300 for every homestead. The bill will be on the November ballot. Dallas police investigating the shooting of an undercover officer early Wednesday morning. KXAS reports the officer was conducting surveillance when a vehicle pulled up to the officer and blocked him in. 
Two people in the vehicle exchanged gunfire with the officer, and one of the suspects left driving the officer's car. The undercover officer was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. A grass fire near Austin, still burning Wednesday, destroyed a building containing 24 apartments and damaged three other buildings. KXN reports the Cedar Park fire spread from the grass Tuesday into a tree and then jumped to the building. The fire also damaged three other buildings in the same complex. Authorities say the Palmer Lane fire burned an estimated 50 acres and is now 60 percent contained. About 300 apartment units, 95 townhomes and multiple businesses in the area were evacuated. The University of Houston at Victoria already in motion with back to school season. This year they are preparing for their 50th anniversary and seeing as they are the only four year institution accessible for 100 miles in any direction. This year's celebration is going to be a big one. The university plans on commemorating the scholars and educators who paved the way for UHV today. And one of the many goals of UHV is to also prepare students for jobs in the crossroads area. We'll also be looking, as we have been for some time now, at pivoting our academic inventory towards the sciences to fit the needs of area employers like Dow and, and Vista and Formosa and others. President Bob Glynn also mentions that UHV strives to elevate the region through education. Fall semester is set to begin Monday, August 28th. And so here is your viewer poll this evening. Scan that QR code on your screen to vote now. The question is, what is your student looking forward to? Is it reuniting with friends, new school supplies, new outfits, exploring new classes, learning new subjects, or new clubs and activities? We have a lot of options. We have a lot today. of them there. And as well, we're going to take a look at these results step by step. Now, reuniting with friends is at 64%. That was mine, I, I would say, and close. Okay. I'm not going to lie. Okay. And then new school supplies is at 0 percent new outfits at nine percent exploring new classes at zero percent and then we have learning new subjects at four percent and finally new clubs and activities at 23 percent thank you for voting we're going to have an update on 25 news now at 10. Now today, as we mentioned, was the first day back for many students in Victoria ISD. And for one middle school, it was a special occasion. Sixth, seventh, and eighth graders at STEM Middle School filled the gymnasium at what once used to be a high school and was formerly Stroman STEM Middle School. And after today is now officially STEM Middle School. This summer was spent upgrading STEM Middle School. It's now outfitted with a STEM lab and other technologies to offer students an education focused on science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Campus principal Denise Moreno welcomed students back and brother Gary Moses came back to his old high school to welcome the new class of students. This is the first year that our 6th, 7th, and 8th graders are returning as STEM Middle School. Last year, 6th um, and 7th graders were STEM Middle School and our 8th graders were Stroman Middle School. Um, the two have, you have collaborated and the entire campus now is STEM Middle School, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. We're super excited that our, our students are here and this is just a big celebration to celebrate them and celebrate the um, accomplishments that they've made and them returning back to school. We are very excited to have them here. I love to see everybody get off to a great start. And that's what we're here for today. Get them motivated, get them off to the right start, uh, get into school, enjoy it. And that's what it's all about, learning. STEM Middle School has an enrollment of around 700 students, and each student gets their own Chromebook laptop to use with their schoolwork. Students also have access to engravers and 3D printers in the STEM lab. Here are some of the top headlines you can read in the Port Labaca Wave. Camp Calhoun Extreme Learning Program returns to the Calhoun County ISD. And a new follow-on contract was signed between the U.S. Department of Defense and Lena's USA for a new rare earths facility in Sea Drift. Plus, the Sea Drift City Council began its budget process for the upcoming fiscal year on August 1st. You can read these stories and more at theportlabacawave.com. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. Then when you're on YouTube, you can get us at Crossroads Today. How about that? All right, stay with us. Coming up on 25 News Now at 6, the Chicago man who killed his 9-year-old neighbor stands in court. Also ahead, witnesses of the Alabama Riverboat Brawl say racist slurs were used.
charged with murdering a nine-year-old girl over the weekend, denied bail during a hearing. There's still no word on the motive for the shooting. Prosecutors did not say why they think Michael Goodman intentionally shot and killed his nine-year-old neighbor, Sarabi Medina, as a Cook County judge denied bail for the Chicago man accused in the slaying. The victim's father shouted to the defendant, asking what he was doing. The defendant ignored the victim's father and instead followed the victim towards the vestibule of her building. Dressed in a black t-shirt and green shorts, the 43-year-old computer programmer appeared in bond court this afternoon. The left side of his face still healing from a gunshot wound he suffered when the girl's father tackled him during the attack as the two men fought for the weapon he used. Goodman now faces a first-degree murder charge accused of killing the Portage Park girl. I'm very angry and I, I honestly don't even want to live here anymore. The shooting happened just before 10 o'clock Saturday night in the 3500 block of North Long Avenue on the city's northwest side where the victim and her alleged killer both lived. Prosecutors say it was after the child bought ice cream for her and her dad at a nearby ice cream truck that a shot rang out. The victim's father told her to go back to their apartment. Just then, the group says they saw Goodman emerge from his apartment building armed with a handgun walking toward the girl. While the victim's father ran to his daughter, he observed the defendant raise the firearm, point it at the victim, and shoot the victim in the head. Goodman was wounded when the girl's father tackled him and the gun fired, striking the defendant in the face. Sarabi later died of her injuries at an area hospital. Her death comes after the family lost her mother to gun violence a few years ago. Meanwhile, a memorial in the girl's neighborhood continues to grow. She was friendly. She always smiled. She was kind. New evidence shows there may have been a racial component to that brawl at a riverfront dock in Alabama. It started when three white men attacked a black man who was trying to move their boat so a riverboat could dock. A witness said in a sworn statement she heard people yell a racial slur. As of now, three white men have been charged with assault in the incident. They are not facing hate crime charges. But officials have indicated more charges are likely as the investigation moves forward. An East Texas woman living a true nightmare. She says a hawk swooped down and attacked her as she was trying to fend off a snake. The assault left her bloody and bruised. It was like I couldn't believe what was happening. Peggy Jones of Silsby was mowing the back six acres of her home on Tuesday, August 1st, when a snake fell down onto her from above. He was starting to dart at my face and come into my face, and he was striking my glasses, and he just kept on and kept on, and I just couldn't get rid of the snake. And it was just, it was like, I think I went into survival mode. Jones says a hawk then came down and pulled the snake from her arm, but not before leaving severe cuts and puncture wounds. The hawk came down four times to get the snake off of my arm. When I looked down, I had blood all over my clothes. I had blood all over my arm. My arm was torn to shreds and I had severe bruising. Jones's husband took her to Altus Emergency Room in Lumberton, where they learned she hadn't been bitten by the snake, but it had done damage to her glasses. Jones describes the entire ordeal as traumatizing. The only thing that I could think of, my husband was at the front of the property and I was screaming and I knew he couldn't hear me. And the only thing I could think of was just to call on Jesus name to come and help me. Her arm is now healing, but she says the emotional scars will need to heal too. You try to sleep at night, you can't sleep. And, and, and you're afraid to shut your eyes because you know if you shut your eyes and you go to sleep, then you're going to have a nightmare and you're going to relive this situation. But she is amazed at the outpouring of support and says her view of life has changed. I'm, I'm happy I'm alive. I'm happy I'm here. My family didn't, didn't ever mean less to me. They just mean more to me now than, than before because it showed me how in the blink of an eye, things can change. Like I said, I, I feel differently about life now. I'm, I, I'm just so blessed. Blessed and known across the country after her story went viral. What matters most to Peggy, though, is that she's healing and recovering. I'm Sydney Ferguson reporting.
Here are some of the top headlines you can read in the Quero Record. Local business leaders discuss challenges with Congressman Michael Cloud. And the Quero ISD Education Foundation distributes over $20,000 to support teachers and students. Plus, Quero High School cheerleaders win several award awards at summer camp. You can read these stories and more at DeWittCountyToday.com. Yes, and I hope... Uh that uh, summer camp was indoors because uh, the temperatures are really getting crazy on it, folks. We were at an even hundred here in, uh, in Victoria, but as you can see, upper 90s here and upper, I mean, higher numbers inland. In fact, we've got some rather amazing record-breaking temperatures that happened today. We'll have all that coming up in a moment. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, the temperatures obviously uh, being a big factor for all of us. Uh, I want to show you this map, which is really kind of, wow, really? Well, first of all, here is uh, the viewer poll question in the weather department for today. Which summer phenomenon irks you the most? Is it the scorp scorching temperatures? A lot of people don't like that. Humidity being extra high. Some people don't like that. No rain, that's, that's number two there. Fire danger or I love summer. Zero for I love summer. <laughs> I think our favorite summer is pretty much over with. Watch this, uh, we had a high today of 100 degrees, but Austin had a, a record high of 108 and the entire state doing, uh, of course, the triple digits. So uh, we are obviously uh, continuing with that. We can, uh, oh, I wanted to remind you, go to Crossroads today, go to the weather page, and you can vote on which your phenomena irks you the most. All right, so there are the forecast highs for tomorrow. 101 for us, 105, 106, 107, all the way up to Dallas, um, 111 in Laredo. And of course, you know, their thermometer is over a pile of rocks, right? That's why it gets so hot. Uh, lots of sunshine today, but you probably felt the humidity in the air. And of course, that's what made the combination of that and the heat index so high. We do have some storms in Oklahoma and Arkansas, but they're not under the ridge of high pressure like we are. In addition to the hot weather, we have this other problem. Red flag warning means we have a high fire danger. Now, Victoria County is not in it, but everybody else around us is. And I don't know if you have, you know, cattle or property or um, corn somewhere else in the state. Uh, the uh, high temperature and the heat and the humidity are getting to dry everything up. So everything from the Colorado, uh, 
the Red River all the way down to Laredo are under uh, the red flag warnings, and that is high fire danger. Dome of Doom is still on top of us. Everything from Florida to Arizona under that. But as we get to the beginning of next week, Monday, you're going to see an easterly wave drive under it. Uh, it's, it can't go through it. Can't go around it. It's got to go under it. And that uh, facility or that little trough will start rolling in. And by the time we get to Monday, it's going to increase the humidity along the Texas coast, giving us a shot at some rain. Last week, you heard me talk about Hurricane Dora. Dora is still a hurricane. It started off the coast of Mexico. It's now south of Hawaii, and it's still a Category 4. Now, ordinarily, it's the middle of nowhere. Why would we talk about it? Well, let's talk about it. The high pressure's up here. The lowest pressure is here. Strong north winds blowing at 50, 60 miles an hour were blowing through Hawaii, and a fire took off. This is Maui, the village of Lahaina, which is the little, cutest little fishing village you ever saw, burned to the ground today. Uh, they're saying that it'll take years to actually rebuild Lahaina back to what it used to be. It's a huge story out there. For tomorrow, 96 in Port Lavaca. For those of you in Cuero, getting up to 103. And uh, the rest of us will be dealing triple digits. Whatever you're doing to stay cool, stay cool, because heat index will be rolling at about 112 to 114. That is your seven-day forecast. Want to remind everybody that we have a QR code. We'd love for you to scan that and put Crossroads today on your phone. Here's Karina. Thank you, Mac. And now here's Sports Director Gina Perez. Thanks, Karina. The series between the Orioles and the Astros continues tonight, and we take a look at some highlights from last night. That's coming up in sports. At a crossroads, former Las Vegas Raiders wide receiver Henry Ruggs will go to prison for at least three years. The former NFL star sentence is a minimum of three years and a maximum of 10 after killing a woman and her dog. That happened in November of 2021 when Ruggs struck the female in with his Corvette. She was driving a Toyota RAV4 and his blood alcohol limit was twice the legal limit and he was driving faster than 150 miles per hour. This ended this part of a drug deal drug where Rugg was agreed to plead guilty to DUI, resulting in death and vehicular manslaughter. At Wednesday's hearing, Ruggs apologized to the family, his own family, and his former teammates. The start of the 2023 volleyball season is underway, and the Victoria East Titans hosted the Forsville Tigers last night. The Titans came to play but would not get its first victory of the season. Every game was fairly close with the scores being 25-17, 25-18, and 25-16, with the Tigers winning each set. East will play in the TexFest tournament in Wimberley on Friday. Victoria West Lady Warriors also played in a round-robin tournament against Navarro and Piper. The Lady Warriors lost both matches, including a five-set loss to Navarro. 
Down at the Roost, the Quero Lady Gobblers hosted the Houtsville Lady Bramas, and the Lady Bramas could not overcome the Gobblers as the Lady Gobblers would sweep the court, taking all three sets. St. Joseph, Calhoun, and Industrial all had a round robin tournament in Industrial, and the Lady Flyers came out on top against the Lady Sand Crabs in four sets, with each set being competitive. St. Joseph went on a tear, winning both of its matches, including a sweep against the Lady Cobras, winning 25-17. 25-12 and 25-8. Addison Azuna led the team with 12 kills, 4 digs, 3 blocks and 1 ace in that game. The Industrial Lady Cobras took on the Calhoun Lady Sand Crabs with Calhoun coming out on top with a 3-set sweep. Calhoun's stat leader in the match was Nevaeh Rangel who had 13 kills and 3 digs. Well, if you've turned off the game early last night between the Astros and the Red Hot Orioles, you missed the game for the ages. The Orioles batter Mount Castle would go deep in the top of the first inning, giving the Birds a 2-0 lead early on. But not much later in the second, Rutschman, the designated hitter, he would get a chance and he goes yards, this time to left center field, almost following the exact same path. But in the bottom of the ninth, bases loaded Kyle Tucker. He said, I can do one better, and he launches one, the 100-mile-per-hour pitch over the right field wall becoming the first player in MLB history to hit a grand slam in the ninth inning or later with his team trailing by three or more runs. The two are playing right now and the score is currently 2-0 to zero with the Astros in the lead. Now Don, interesting story. We were watching this game and then you said, hey, I feel a granny coming up. You were, you were talking about a grand slam. You, yes, yes. You yes. got a crystal ball too? or No, I just had this feeling. You know, if a guy batting 200 was up there, I wouldn't have that feeling. But Kyle Tucker had some power and he showed it last night to those Oriole fans. Poor Oriole fans. Hope he has some more in his uh, tank tonight. Well, that's how they got the two runs. He hit a home run. So, I mean. Grand it, slam. I love it. <laughs> grand slam. And not like the one at Denny's. All right. Well, we're back in a moment. The Mega Millions multi-billion dollar winning ticket is sold in Florida, but two Texans did well too. Two Texans woke up millionaires following Tuesday's Mega Millions drawing. No, a single ticket sold well now. A single ticket sold near Jacksonville, Florida, <laughs> won the $1.58 billion Mega Millions jackpot, ending a stretch of lottery futility that had stretched for nearly four months or my life forever. But anyway, uh. there were still five <laughs> other people across the country that won the $1 million match five including two tickets sold in Austin and Socorro, which is near El Paso. So the winner gets $1.58 billion, but then the winner says, I want to take it in a cash sum right now, so that would be $780 million. So that's half. Jeez. That's half. That's, well, you know, what do you do with that? Buy a country or something, you know? It depends on the country. It depends on the country. Man, that is, that is something. Well, uh, happy for them. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you're looking at uh, triple-digit heat. Maybe they can buy some cooler weather for us. Uh, we're looking at uh, pretty much the same thing through the weekend. A little shower chance early next week. Thank you, Mac, and thanks for joining us. We hope to see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 10.